pledge of allegiance. If everyone could stand and join us, please. Sorry. 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 Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. Okay. So first order of business is public comments. Do we have any public comments this evening? Thank you, sir. Okay. Next is the um, consent agenda. There's two items, A and B. And those are annual, right, Kevin? Yes. Much? Yes. Okay. Um, motion is moved to accept and approve the consent agenda, consent agenda items A and B as shown. Second. Thank you, David. Any question? It's the um, Boys and Girls Road Race and the Oars event. Nope. Change the date. Usually it's in the fall, isn't it? The road race. Yeah, they did change they change the date. They didn't do it last fall. Right. Oh, yeah. Prior to that, it was in September. Okay. All right. So all those in favor? Aye. Three. Thank you. Next is our oh, no correspondence this week. We so move to um. Item number four, which is second-hand motor vehicle license application. Move to the uh, auto dealer. Yes. Come on up. Okay, come on up. <laughs> All right, so the motion is that we move to accept and approve the second-hand motor vehicle license to break and tire center, 76 Powder Mill Road. I'll Good. second. Okay, second. So discussion. Um, <coughs> Good evening. You can take a seat. You can sit. Oh, you can okay. sit. I'm Thank sorry. You. That's okay. Where, where is, um, which, is 76 Powder Mill the Midas? Uh, next to the Advanced Auto. Um, so next to the bank? Uh, Directly in between, bank. yeah. In between the Advanced and the bank, yes. And didn't we approve yeah. something for that same location not that long ago? Yeah, it's a condominium. There's like three units in the, basically, uh, the lot. It's okay. a 76A, 76C, and then 76. And are the other, the you're looking to, to, for a license to sell secondhand motor vehicles, right? Basically, uh, we're opening the uh, uh, tire center, which is more like an automotive uh, service. Okay. And then uh, we're also in need of um, secondhand um, used car license just uh, to maintain the volume for the work uh, because some of the you know, basically created job uh, is required by, you know, keeping the staff busy uh, for the cars that may need uh, basically repairs. But then again, it may take a while and then be resold at the convenience. All right. So you, you but I think to your point, David, there was, a, we approved a license, was it the start of the year? And it was a change of ownership, wasn't it? For? Correct. Yeah. Is that, correct. So, okay. So that's this is. That's a 76A. That's, that's 76A. Yeah. Okay. And. You're, un you're unaffiliated with them, is that right? Uh, well, I'm the landlord, they're the tenants. Oh, okay. But having said that, they're going to be uh, basically uh, selling used cars. That's what the basically yeah. mainstream income for them is. Ours is uh, entirely different, which we uh, end up actually servicing their vehicles as oh, well okay. as... Uh, as well, I, guess I, I guess I'm confused as to why that would require a second hand. Are you going to be selling cars too? Well, we basically, like I said, uh, for uh, maintaining the work uh, volume for yeah. the uh, for the shop to keep it busy, yeah. we have to have like every uh, almost uh, almost I want to say almost ninety percent of the gas stations even have uh, like a second hand uh, yeah. license just to be able to turn. Yeah. Jobs and, uh, and how many cars do you expect to have? Uh, pro we're not going to be uh, advertising uh, on at least the uh, front of the shop as a you know dealership, because again uh, we have a tenant that yeah. basically does that. So this is only for limited, probably like five or six, uh, basically vehicles at a time. And is that in keeping with what the limitations of the available space on that lot are? Because I know when we were yes. talking to your tenant, one of the questions that we had was about volume in particular. So I think where we're just kind of mentally doing the gymnastics right now sure. is just kind of sure. understanding 
you know, if, if everyone's at volume, True. are uh, we in keeping with? The, the way the property is, as, as far as the physical uh, mm -hmm. location goes, they have one third of the lot, which is over an acre lot. So okay. we only basically um, uh, rented out that section, which is almost a, a third of it uh, to the tenants. Uh, so this is maintains the two third of an acre. So, uh, I mean, as far as the parking goes, um, there is plenty of parking, at least I can tell you that. Who's on the front of the street? We are. And they're in the back? No, they're actually on the side. Um, but there's like um, one of the businesses, which is the body shop, is in the back. So the um, mechanic shop basically is front of the body shop. And then they're actually to the left of us, which is also entirely, um, they have their own frontage and their own <coughs> sort of uh, third of an acre lot. Yeah, I, I, I'm not looking to in any way block a a, uh, a business from coming in. I'm just trying to get. My sure, eyes no, no. Around. We did we did a lot of enhancements actually since we took over the building. Even just as far as the cleanup goes, as far as the renovations goes, we put in uh, a lot of uh, money just to make it presentable. Since we've moved in, it's definitely enhanced the neighborhood and the cleanups and all the stuff that we took in. Okay. All right. I'm just showing him Google. Or sure, just absolutely. So we have the visual. The, of well, the the, uh, the tenants basically have the previous uh, enterprise rent a car lot. Yeah. Okay. Basically, that's where they have located. It's actually a separate building. It is separate building, separate um, electricity, separate everything. Are they in the, so they're in the enterprise building itself. Exactly. In the lot. So it's exactly. Okay. So there's A and B at the front and back. There is uh, no. There are actually the A is side by side. Um, Enterprise, it's like, like she mentioned, they have a separate building. Right, yeah. separate. So, there's, so there's two condos in one building and one condo in another? There's three, actually. There are three. There's a body shop in the back. The okay. front, uh, there is a front, and then there is the side, where the side is the next door neighboring. If, I mean, other than just being in the same property, it's actually they have their own, um, you know, lot, building, everything. Yeah. So, so there's, there's two buildings, three condos. Correct. The uh, okay, the, the, so the main bu the my main question was is two bu two buildings, three condos. The the building to the left, if you're looking from the street, is two units, and the building to the right is the third unit. Exactly. Okay. Since yeah, okay, it's totally different thought process that they're separated. But all right, I was just trying to get a picture in my mind where we're looking at, but now I have it. But keep in mind that uh, we don't want to <coughs> even be in the competition of the next door mm -hmm. business right. because uh, you know we just want to be accommodating each other. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, just the fact of the matter is, uh, it's one of the uh, necessity of running a repair shop. <coughs> you actually do need that as a leverage yep. okay. because sometimes com cars, even like regular customers walk in, that the cars basically need more than what it's worth. Mm -hmm. So they'd rather just get rid of it and then get something. So it's right. kind of, we can buy it and the next door neighbor can, you know, accommodate them with the sale. So eventually we have the spare time, we'll fix it and then we put money in That's it and then turn it around. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Um, yes. Any other questions, David? No. Joe? No, thank you. All those in favor? Thank you very much. Thank Good you. Luck. Thank you. Thank you, um, folks. Does he need to do anything? No, uh, we have the license. Becky will have the license for you. I think I have to yeah. take the rest with Becky. Right. Yep. Uh, Perfect. Good luck. She was out. Thanks for Thank you, folks. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you. She'll give you a call. Absolutely. Well, I think we'll put the town administrative search committee on to on to the end. That way we'll keep everybody here. <laughs> we won't be alone tonight. But um, no. Nope, so I'm going to just. Um, just for just for fun, so everybody understands, um, and anybody that's listening might understand. I'll read the. Um, it's short. I'll read the um, section in the town charter that speaks to it, and then we'll just get on with the appointments. If unless anybody objects to that idea. Um, so in the town charter, it is section four six, and it's titled "Selecting a Town Administrator," and it reads. Forthwith, following a vacancy in the office of the town administrator, the Board of Selectmen shall establish a screening committee to review applicants for the position of town administrator. The screening committee is to consist of nine persons representing the demographics of the town and shall include 
at least one town employee. It may include up to three town employees. The employee members of the committee do not have to be residents of the town. Not more than 30 days following the vacancy in the office of the town administrator, the nine persons chosen aforesaid shall meet to organize and to plan a process for the selection of the town administrator. The screening committee shall review all applications received by it, screen all such applicants by checking and verifying work records and other credentials, and provide for interviews to be conducted with such number of candidates it deems to be necessary, desirable, or expedient. Not more than 120 days following the date on which the committee meets to organize, the committee shall submit to the Board of Selectmen the names of not less than three nor more than five persons whom it believes to be best suited to perform the duties of the Office of Town Administrator. Within 30 days following the date of the list of nominees is submitted to it, the Board of Selectmen shall choose by majority vote one of the said nominees to serve as the Town Administrator. In the event that the Board of Selectmen shall fail to make an appointment within the said 30 days, the screening committee shall reopen the screening process to solicit more nominees. On the appointment of a town administrator, the committee established hereunder shall be considered discharged. And that is section 4-6. And um, we appreciate the nine people who are here that have volunteered. And um, is the town clerk here? Yes. Oh, she's hiding. Hmm. Oh, she's way back there. Okay. I thought she was over there, like behind Stephanie and Andrew. I'm like, looking in the wrong place. I'm like, okay, so um, are we going to do these individually, Michelle? Uh, we can have, do we have all the members here? For the I see everybody is here. Okay. So I'll have everybody stand. So, for the record, I will read the names. The um, <laughs> move to, in the motion that I, there's another motion involved, and it's moved to accept and approve the following to the town administrator search committee. There was a second. Second. Um, and the names are Amy Loveless, who is a town employee. Mike Noble is a town employee. Don Capello is a resident. Jim Hines is a resident. William Doyle is a resident. Paula Copley is a resident. Justine St. John is a resident. <coughs> Donna Dobson is a resident. And James McCann as a resident. Does anybody have any discussion about the nine? No. Nope. All those in favor? Thank you. Okay. okay. May I have you all raise your right hand, please? And do you solemnly swear to faithfully perform the duties of the town administrator search committee, honestly, impartially, and to the best of your ability, so help you God? Yeah. If you'd all like to follow me to my office, we can finish this up. I want you guys. To, once you guys are done with her, can you come back? We'll just discuss what's next. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you guys, can, you guys should stay. What's up? Are you moving on to the next topic before I come back? Oh uh, no, we're going to talk about this when then when you come back. Yeah, so yo, you won't, I won't do anything without you. We're going to jump to seven. Bye guys. Bye Jess. Nice seeing you. Bye. All right. Item number seven is the emergency management director. He doesn't need to be here to do that. Does, it, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does the chief need to be here for that? No. All right. So item number seven is the appointment of the um, emergency management director. And Kevin, you've had the conversation with chief? Yep. Yep. All right. And the, the motion is that we move to appoint Chief Anthony Stowers as emergency management director, effective February 14th. 2018 for an indefinite term. Do a second. I'll second. Anything to add to that, Kevin? Other than That's it. Okay. Um, any discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Thank you. One to nine. One yeah, to nine? Yeah, because we don't want to do the. Uh, yeah, let's do the ice budget. Yeah. Three zero. All right. <laughs> So, the vote was three zero. Uh, Snow and ice. This is the annual. Unfortunately, it's become <laughs> a, an annual. Um, you didn't give us any document on this, right? So there's, there's yeah, the there's a document to. plus a um, a revenue uh, expenditure report, but that that that, that report's uh, already outdated. Yeah. 
um, there's an updated uh, updated number. So as of the date of this report, which was on January 25th, mm -hmm. um, the Municipal Modernization Act of November 2016 eliminates prior approval for deficit spending with snow and ice removal by the Board of Selectmen. Alternatively, requires only that the Chief Administrative Office of the Municipality authorize deficit spending, which I have done. Um, and uh, this is the note from the finance director in regards to him informing me that as of January 25th, um, we've exceeded the snow and ice appropriation uh, for FY 2018 of 117,000 by 14,62.66. Um, and that number has uh, gone up. There's, there was some uh, expenditures that are actually in that warrant um, now. And obviously, that's pre uh, tomorrow's event and, and any fu uh, future snow and ice related events uh, for the rest of the year. Um, so it's just, again, annual notice so that um, this, this is an informational uh, piece for the board uh, with regards to the current status of the uh, shortfall. Um, so Kevin, how will this get addressed as we kind of like head into like Saturday's meeting on the budget? And so, or will it factor in at this point? It does or? not factor in. Okay. Um, it will factor in um, in the next coming weeks when there's a um, free cash recommendation. Okay. Number. So, what's that? Can we get 11 of those? Yeah. Just a couple time of for um, them. I don't, yeah. So, that's the 11 of the, 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 the Yeah, the, uh, mm -hmm. the fr front, and then the 11 is the, the letter from Paradigm. I'll just give them the option Paradigm. of discussing yeah. it. So if you want to just make them one and then the other one we can double size. Eleven okay. copies. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Sorry to interrupt. So they get an eleven of all of it. Um yeah, sorry. Uh so they, that It'll would have be to be addressed as part of the free cash. Okay. Um typically again that's a moving number. And I usually do my um free cash recommendations by the second meeting in March. Yep. Uh, at that point it's still a placeholder because there's right. still uh, March invoices storm. that come in and roll in. Um, last year at that time it was around 340, okay. time, like 360, something like that. And it didn't really change too much after that. Okay. Um, but in 15, it did drastically. 16, it wasn't too bad. But, okay. Um, so, so, yeah, that's the time that we'll have to address that will be um, during the free cash uh, piece and uh, hopefully. Yeah, exactly. Fingers crossed. Cross okay. your fingers. The less, and that, that just starts to chip away at other, you know, funds to do other uh, projects, one-time expenses, capital, et cetera. And that's kind of always a moving target where other things, as that number rises, we have to prioritize and take things off the, uh, the budget. Um, but one, one other addition that, you know, is known is we still have to fund the rest of the uh, capital, I'm sorry, the uh, master plan right. um, contract for uh, you know, which was to come out of that as well. So, um, but yeah, so this is just a inf informational um, process. Uh, um, nothing, no action required at this time. What's the, um, <coughs> what's the ac accurate new number, Kevin? Um, so he, he submitted it, Aaron submitted it today. Um, and he thinks that it's a shortfall. It was noted as 103,000. Um, he says it's closer to 140,000. So 14,000 became 140,000? Yes. Okay. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. Sounds, this like my, sounds like my wife did that. Yeah, one. a lot of that is probably, <laughs> it's probably um, a replenishment of salt, the salt shed. Okay. When those invoices come in, they're any, uh, 40 to 80 grand at a whack, um, depending on where there was in the process from when Mike triggered the deficit. Okay. I went in the wrong business. I should have gone in the salt supply. Right. So I have the number here. The, t the total snow and ice spent uh, for FY17 and deficit was 367,567. So just under 370,000, and that came from a free cash uh, allocation. That was last year's. You said that was last year's. Okay, short, got yeah, it. total final shortfall. Okay, that's a, that's a total shortfall. That was the total shortfall. Right. Um, okay. The amount expended was four eighty four five sixty four, but the shortfall that we had to make up with um, free cash was the three sixty seven. Okay, so we're probably so going to be pretty close to that. I would have bet. Yeah, and it's running fairly consistent with this time last year. Hmm. 
Yep. It's going to go up tomorrow. Right. Um, I mean, is the the um, since we're still waiting, is the the uh, town administrator's report? Can you do that now? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it was a. It's already, we have it. It's it's in the minutes. It was a short one, um, just from administration. Nothing from any other department updates, because uh, we just met last Tuesday. Okay. Um, any questions there? Okay. Should we get that done? It was great to see that a lot of this got picked up on social media fields. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Angela's promotion in particular. Right. Yeah, and, and uh, the chief, we did a press release through uh, John about, you know, her promotion and the Perfect. department's first female um, captain officer. So. <laughs> thank you. Much. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Steph. So, um, first of all, um, from the board and the two missing board members and um, <laughs> everybody in the room, thank you guys and nine of you for uh, volunteering for this, um, which ends up being a pretty important um, committee and group. Um, we certainly appreciate the time and effort that's going to go into it. And um, we look forward to um, hearing back from you guys in a pretty short period of time, actually, for what, um, what it is. Again, look forward to it. So, um, I don't. I don't know that there's any real rules to to how you guys do this. Um, do this. I know you need to. I know you need to have a um, yeah. chair and a and a, a secretary. I guess would be. I uh, would be my guess to keep minutes and um, to control things. But um, other than that, I don't know that there's uh, anything in the town charter that. that um, dictates a specific process or a specific set of rules for you guys to follow in terms of how you do what you do. Um, so that's really going to be up to yourselves and the chairperson as to how um, things get done. So if there's any questions for us throughout the process, certainly you guys can always ask us either through email or here in a meeting or, or anything else or through, through Andrew after the 14th. Um, so... Um, That'll be up on you, all on you guys as to how you guys work your your group. We don't have any say over it. We just wait for the um, three to five names to come back, and then we do what we're um, charged to do through the charter. The two documents that um, Steph just handed out, one is the um, advertisement from the last um, town administrative search. It's the I've changed the um, budget number. The 45 million, which approximates the um, budget that will be for this year, and then the other change that I made was, um, it's it, at some point it said a competitive benefit package and compensation commensurate with experience, and there's a dollar amount there. Um, I we took the dollar amount out at our last um, board meeting, and it just says commensurate with experience will be negotiated by the board of selectmen, um, and then the last line we we took the date of. The deadline date out and you guys can put that in that, that's the first document um, the second document is a is a letter that we all received as the board from um, a company called community paradigm associates and um their owner bernie lynch yeah, bernie, bernie lynch so um you guys can read that and i guess um you guys can determine whether or not you're um, interested in Mr. Lynch, of course, if we if that's a route you guys want to go, I don't know that we've ever gone that route in Maynard before, but if that's a route that you guys would like to go, you can. Um, we'll have to, you know, have a, a second discussion as to what the uh, pricing is it of that is going to be and how we um, find a funding source for it in the in the future. But um, again, it's it's all up to you guys as to how you do that, what you feel about um, Community Paradigm or any of the other consulting groups that are out there doing this type of work. That's that's you know part of your responsibility as a committee, and um, that's really it that we have to say. Unless anybody has any questions for us or no, for Mr. Kevin, Chair, or can I just yeah add a couple of things. Just um, as the chairman stated on Community Paradigm Associates, uh, they're one of the the main um, sort of two or three in the state that are doing a lot of uh, 
Municipal management placements, um, they do some chief work and some other stuff, but primarily uh, town administrator, town manager search, and they're not there to replace the committee. Um, the consultant supports the committee, um, depending on which level um, they're check. They'll do everything from the full um, kind of uh, checking of um, resumes and applications. They'll receive them, um, call through them, and, and essentially make a recommendation on uh, to the committee. Uh, who to move forward for consideration and interviews They'll, as far as going right in through the background investigations and um, background reference checks, that whole thing. So really uh, supplements uh, the work that the committee does um, as volunteers by bringing in a professionalized consultant to assist that group. So as the chair said, that, that was an option. And they just, uh, he, he proactively reached out with that notice. Um, the other thing I just want to stress is um, the importance of this committee's work with uh, confidentiality. Um, obviously, the municipal management um, world is uh, is very, very um, cautious of that and concerned about that um, until such time that finalists are um, moved forward as uh, recommended as finalists. Um, so when that three to five candidates at that time, those candidates would be given an opportunity to um, you know, it would be noted that they've been selected as a finalist and have the opportunity to back out at that time before it becomes public. So I just want to stress that, um, you know, the confidentiality throughout the entire process um, outside of the nine of you uh, needs to be e extremely uh, kept close to the vest. Um, you know, the, the committee would be, um, it's a formal committee, so there'll be open meeting law, public posting of the meeting, but you essentially would open the meeting and then go into executive <coughs> session for all uh, anything related to the candidate discussion, uh, interviews and review of resumes. Um, other than that, that's, that's all I had. I just wanted to make sure that that was stated out front. Um, best of luck. Um, it's a tough uh, market right now. There's a, a lot of job uh, openings. There's a lot of uh, opportunities and um, you know, a shortage of qualified managers. So um, I hope for Maynard, uh, get a great um, replacement, but again, just keeping in mind that um, you know, it, it is a very competitive market, um, even close to here. Um, it's currently actively, uh, Acton is currently searching Boxborough, um, as well as probably at this time, another 10 that are active uh, throughout the state. So um, thank you for stepping up on behalf of Maine and best of luck. David, anything? No, other than thank you. And um, you know, I'm a, I, I think we have a great group and I think yeah. you'll find You'll enjoy, I know most of you, so I think you'll enjoy, uh, find that you'll enjoy being with one another if, if you don't already know one another. Um, but tonight, you might want to take an opportunity to stand in the hallway and come up with your first date of meeting because the timeline, as you can see from this, um, is very strict. And uh, not once you get started, it's, <laughs> it's not that long. I've been, this is the third time that I personally have sat on the board while we've gone through this process. And each time, um, I think the feedback I've gotten from the people who have sat on those committees have been that it's been very, very rewarding and, uh, you know, kind of a, a, an exciting opportunity for people. So I wish you all the best of luck and thank you again. And again, as Chris said, we're here if you have questions or, uh, you know, concerns and want in insight. Um, you know, there may even be reason at, at a time to reach out to town council on something that might be there. And, and you could always reach out to Andrew uh, once Kevin is gone. So we have the resources. Don't feel that you're alone and, uh, you know, enjoy it. So if I could just to add to that, um, if you do have time to meet tonight, the finance conference room is open. If all, all nine of you are here, maybe might be an opportunity for a quick um, what's next. And then uh, moving forward, if you could just reach out to uh, Becky Mosca um, in the Board of Selectmen's office with regards, once you folks select a chair, and that's probably um, the individual that will be uh, handling this, but um, just reaching out to her for um, room reservation uh, for the conference room. Um, again, that's, that's the, the best room for that purpose. Um, it can be uh, utilized uh, in executive session, um, and it can handle the nine uh, of you folks. Um, so yeah, just reach to, out to Becky Mosca through the Selectman's office on any of that. Um, and then also uh, set up of the Town Administrative Search Committee uh, chairman email, um, if you folks go down that direction, um, to actually submit resumes. Um, that email is essentially active but disabled um, as of right now. And uh, you know, the, the administration can get that restored. Um, once a chair is selected, um, the chair would have the direct access to that email. Um, I think that was that was it.
John, did you have a question? Uh, just quickly, I just wanted to clarify. Um, I haven't had a chance to reread the chart in about 10 years. Um, these are closed meetings, or just when we get to the resumes? So, when, yeah, discussion of um, the individuals and res. So the meetings would have to be publicly posted. Right. Um, selection of chair, uh, those type of discussions. Um, planning for future meeting dates, those would all be in open session. Okay. When it comes down to uh, review of um, personnel, essentially. So when it comes to review of resumes received, discussion of specific folks, and then the interviews themselves would all be in, a, in executive session. Yep. Perfect. My other question yep. was just about um, having a town hall contact, but you already answered that. Yeah, it would be back in. And then also, if, uh, if you go on the public website for tonight's meeting under the um, packet uh, for tonight's meeting under this particular agenda item, it lists the exact section of, that um, Chris referenced with regards to the charter that will define the, um, the dates and kind of turnaround timeline. So, you know, as Chris said, it's pretty open with, how, you know, this not being too prescribed other than specific timelines, um, which is prescribed by charter. So if you can, just take a, a, a look at that, and it's spelled out for you pretty well. Um, beyond that, it's kind of a however you guys want to move it forward. William? Can I actually, before, sorry. Oh, sure, go ahead. Just well, th go ahead. Thanks, Chris, I, I, I so appreciate that. Um, so just as a, to echo a comment that Kevin made earlier um, about the challenge of the environment, um, searching for candidates right now. This was actually a subject of a panel at the Mass Municipal Association meeting, annual meeting just a couple of weeks ago, where a couple of towns stepped forward and talked about that. Um, I will go on. I was just trying to look at the public facing website to see if there are any resources that came from that. Um, but if there's not any shareable documents from it, I'll at least make sure to pull down the towns that were presenting in it and the points of contact of that. Um, because during the part of the discussion that I was there for, I thought there were some very kind of useful perspectives and insights, both from the Board of Selectmen slash search committee side, as well as perspectives from the candidate side of that, like what they were thinking about when they read, you know, the, the job search, et cetera. So I will try and see what I can dig out on that and, and get that out to the chair of your committee once selected. Um, and, you know, as we're also obviously available to, to share whatever additional documentation. The role of the town administrator is, of course, described in charter. Um, we can also share the, um, you know, an iteration of the last position description of it as well, just to help inform, you know, as a committee, what does this really mean? Um, and then if you have conversation points or thoughts about that as you all go forward. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Well, um, I understand that Becky's our um, administrative contact um, for this. If the committee um, chooses to have conversations with other um, employees, is there any restrictions or um, process we have to go through to do that? I don't think so. As far as you mean, like, if you want to talk to them about what's important in a town administrator. Right. Yeah. And there have been several people <coughs> within this building that have asked that, that same question, and I don't think there's a restriction. Yeah, I mean, uh, I would put that as a, an agenda item um, to have them come in. The problem is if, you know, individuals meet with individual employees, um, you know, you could get into some open meeting law issues um, around having discussions around the same topic. Could you um, have, if you, if the committee developed so just from a process perspective if the committee developed like okay these are this is a set of five questions that we'd want to explore and then they asked either the chair or the vice chair to serve as the person that did the outreach for one-on-one -on -one conversations would that, that be work. okay yeah, that would work because I I mean just I think it probably yeah Great. yeah I will um, uh, I will ask um, Becky to get, once she hears from somebody, get you guys all a copy of the open meeting law. I'm not sure, I'm not sure if it's on the town website. It might be on the town website, but if not, I'll, I'll ask Becky to get you guys a copy of it because we talk about it a lot and, it, and you guys will probably need it at some point. There might be some questions of what constitutes an open meeting law. For us, it's more than two people in one room at the same time. Um, so I'm not sure what, what, the, what the rules are for everybody else, but. I'll have Becky get you guys a copy of that. Um, and it's, if you guys have nine people that are here and you're going to go in the other room at some point, here is a copy of the town charter that's extra that I have that has that four or six tabbed off. So you can, you can take that and have it for now. Um, 
Other than that, unless anybody else has any other questions regarding um, the appointment, again, uh, we can't thank you guys enough for your, um, you know, volunteering for this. I'm sure the, the town in general feels the same way because it's probably the most important committee we have or board that we have um, in play right now in the town. So we do appreciate it tremendously. And thank you all. Good luck. Thank Good you. Luck. Yes. See you in three months. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> So I don't know if you want this. <coughs> okay. <coughs> well, you should you should ask them not to nominate you in your absence. <laughs> The You're the chairman. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, yes. Um, all right, so our next item is the Sesqu Sesquicentennial Planning Committee. It's a mouthful. Mm -hmm. So. Hi, Molly. Good evening. How are you? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Thanks for coming in. Oh, sure. Thanks for having us for the Sesquicentennial. <laughs> That the first rule of being part of the plan. Yeah, if the people spell it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the first rule. You have to be able to pronounce it. Otherwise known as the 150th birthday <laughs> planning committee. Um, we're here tonight because we were assembled this summer, and I know the board wanted us to just touch base at the beginning of the year with an update. So that's what we're here to do. Also with me tonight is Paula Copley, Lisa Dayhill, and John Hochin, who are also com committee members with us. Um, we're very excited to be able to celebrate Maynard's 150th birthday, and we have some good ideas on the horizon. Um, we're gonna, the, the kickoff will be April 19th, 2020, and that's going to be the opening of the time capsule that's here, and we're planning on a year of events that will end in August 2021. Um, we have um, some fun ideas. We're going to do a new time capsule. We're thinking of a parade, a ball, fireworks souvenirs, t-shirts, we're going to do a, a, a historical book on Maynard, updating from the last 50 years. Um, we're starting this spring with a slogan contest mm. that's going to be open to the public, that's going to be um, attached to the celebration, and then in the fall we're going to have a logo contest that's going to be open to the high school students, so the, we're going to pick a logo designed by a high school student. Um, so that will be in the fall. And I know in previous presentations, um, I know Jack McKean's here also, the Historical Commission came and to talk about it and we're going to, um, in the future, be asking for some seed money from the town, permission to go on forward with seed money with the town and that we're hoping to pay it back. We will be paying it back through donations and sales throughout the, um, the next couple of years for the uh, celebration. Um, and then once we have more formalized ideas, we'll be creating a budget and fundraising estimates to come back and talk to the town. Right. Some um, going forward with some seed money. Cool. As of yet, any sense of um, interest of like businesses to, to serve as potential sponsors, or is it kind of early? We're going to be yet? working on that. That hasn't really even started yet, but we are going to be going um, looking for sponsorships from everyone, everyone in town. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I wonder where that came from, Jack. <laughs> um, so, all right. What do we know? What what the um, uh, it might be early, but the guess at what the seed money number would be, or um, not yet. We haven't developed. We're going to be working that soon. We haven't developed the budgets yet, okay. so I think it's just too soon to ask us for specifics. Okay. That's where we stand so far. So the big kickoff, we'll be starting with the slogan and the logo, and that's what's going to be attached to like T-shirts. And we're thinking about a commemorative coin and a road race. So we have a so lot of plans. Did, like, on the, <coughs> so from a timing perspective, like the logo and the the slogan and the logo are people time people time costs, not material right. costs. That's, yeah. So it would probably be looking for seed money at the earliest starting like maybe fall, like once you had the logo and slogan? Yes. Okay. And the timeline again, because I look back to see the year. It, so mm. it's, it's 2021 is actually the, the year. 
Correct. Right, but the um, we're beginning. The, your your plan is to begin the celebration on in twenty twenty. April nineteenth, twenty twenty, because that's when this time capsule from the last yep. the hundred so is fifty to years open. since right. the time or so twenty five years, whatever it is, since the time fifty. Capsule. 50. So that's um, what we're we're starting. That's the kickoff opening that time capsule. Right. Um, one other thought. Uh, I know it's controversial at times when the state legislature gives out. Uh, oh, you know, uh, proclamations. Or? No, I'm talking oh. about money. Oh, <laughs> for um, hell, you don't know, David. <laughs> for money, for money. money, for celebrations like this, you know, it oftentimes becomes very controversial because you know the, the state budget's tight. And, um, but there might be an avenue to at least inquire sure. to see what you would do to go about getting, mm -hmm. you know, you know, whatever number would help uh, from. Uh, a, you know, some type of allocation from the legislature to help celebrate 150. Sure. I'll send a note to um, I'll send a note to um, Kate Hogan, and then okay. I'll, let, I'll let you guys know what I get sure. back from her. I'll just send her a note in the next couple of days and ask her if there's anything that she could suggest along the lines of what David just said, because I know we, last year when we got that uh, when we got the the last year's that sheet, you know, from the, the governor's office yeah. ahead several states i mean several communities that, that were cut but mm -hmm. but there were many that weren't so yeah and, and that's why it gets controversial because they, you know well, kate and, might kate sure. might know it's Let's shaky see. more than controversial i mean they might approve it and then they yeah. don't well, that's it. another <laughs> problem that you can't count on the money right. swamp got the money. did they yeah. No. Oh, shocking. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. I wonder why. Swamp Scott would be very confused. But, uh, <laughs> cool. So one thing Thank just you. to add to that as you're considering, because obviously there's, you know, you can't just, um, if it's not budget fathers, you just can't just pull money out, right. right? So one thing as the timeline that I'm hearing that maybe for consideration is the fall town meeting, um, you know, having to get, you know, appropriate money from somewhere else, you know, stabilization, <coughs> you know, looking at where, uh, you know the, the group's going to be at and you know, i think um the last time they did it, three years at thirty thousand dollars something was ten thousand a year and yeah 50 years later that number is not ten thousand right mm -hmm. so, so over two and a half years i think they had allocated like thirty three thousand right. dollars yeah so over two and a half years so that might be a time you know if, if uh they have all of that worked out with logos and, and planning you know maybe fall town meeting to actually uh, <coughs> allocate um an article for that purpose mm -hmm maybe a good option how big is the committee now we have nine members okay because it is a it's a huge task well we're all once the planning starts we're going to have to have like some subcommittees to help with like a fundraising committee and a ball committee and a parade committee so we are going to be looking for other people to help with subcommittees yeah even putting on a parade, if you want to mm -hmm. get, you know, we have to start that. We get to bands that are named right. type right. things. You know, mm -hmm. I think I mentioned the last time we had the, this discussion. I remember the fiftieth, uh, the hundred, well, whatever year it was, hundred and fiftieth, whatever, <laughs> the no, hundredth, <laughs> the hundredth. Uh, I stood, I sat with my family up on Main Street, and there were national bands. Oh, they, it was that, like they really had the Mummers from Philadelphia right. were here. The Mummers, and it was, yep. You know, I remember that specifically. Mm -hmm. That's been the one twenty fifth. That was because well, it wouldn't have been 50 years ago. It was 50 years ago, almost. Oh. Um. Well, this was 1971, so I was nine. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's good to know in terms of timing, just for y'all, in terms of pulling together estimates. Right. Okay. Okay. Great. Anybody Thank else? you. Nothing? No. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Mom. Thank you. Thank you. Not too late to get nominated, Paula, if you get in there quick. <laughs> not too late quick, to get nominated. Well, now you'll be named chairman of this committee, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we went to the special meeting. Great. Articles for approval. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 
The only ones that really need to be updated were J and K, right? So the only ones that I would, yeah, recommend holding off on this evening um, until the 20th is J and K. Um, we that information has been provided back to town council. Okay. Um, we're just waiting on a clean copy for her. So timing wise, uh, it didn't work out for this evening, but. Um, It'll be, it's on their radar for the 20th. Um, and that still gives us enough time? The, yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, the warrant um, oh, technically right. closes March this 9th. Friday. Okay. Um, the 9th, so, you know, as I said, there could be, there's technically still could be a, uh, you know, a citizen petition or something mm -hmm. could come in, but highly unlikely. Um, but ultimately, yeah, it closes the 9th, and then, um, you know, on the 20th meeting, um, if you get that going, uh, on accepting and approving J and K. Okay. Um, Prior so to the approval of the final warrant. Are there any so. other changes, or is everything else the same that we saw last week in draft form? Uh, correct. Okay. Yes. You did not see um, P last week. You saw the header, but you didn't see the actual. Well, we we um, gotcha. Oh, you did see it. Separately. We saw it. Yep. No, we saw, saw that. We saw it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It okay. came. It was just was. We. It was a late addition to the yep. agenda. Right. That's what and. It was, yeah. But to the discussion we had earlier, Chris. Um, mm -hmm. Product manufacturer, yeah, cultivator. Cultivating is in there with, with a special permit. Oh, in, special in two, permit. In, right, in two, I see it now. I, I wasn't sure. So yeah. it's in two places, AC, ACI and I. Yeah. Hmm. Healthcare industrial and industrial. Certainly, <laughs> certainly 10,000 square feet in HCI. Yeah. yeah. So just um, for reference, um, so this was the, a letter that the members of the board received that we've now forwarded on to Kevin and Andrew. And we have that now? Yeah. Okay. Of uh, somebody making an inquiry about the town's zoning around cultivator. You didn't notice if Bill was on that, right? That Bill no, I forwarded it to, I included Bill as okay. a CC address when I forwarded it to, it to both of you. Yeah. yeah. So can we um, do these all at once? Do we have to do them individually? I would, yeah, I would do them individually. Okay. Because uh, some of them are, some of them we're not actually approving. Um, you know, some of them are actual. Uh, so the motions are actually different. Jay and K, which, which do we, which are we approving? We're approving everything except. Well, can we? We can't move and accept J and K right now because they're incomplete, or can we? Correct. Okay. Yeah. But everything else is correct. Yep. So, um, so we, you we want could, the ones, we could you theoretically the move to accept and approving. move to accept A, B, and C because there's a couple, there's several that are accept and approved. So we need to do separate That's motions correct. at least yeah. for those. But any that are except, I would think we could do at bulk. Yeah. That's true. And are we okay with the fact that D still has a comment in it? D. The disabled elderly in Texas. Yeah, that's relief. a comment. That's that was just her comment. It's not anything. I've talked with the <laughs> okay, treasurer. Okay, doesn't collector, change the yeah. Um, and she's not interested in doing that. So okay. the comment could come. It should be deleted. Um, it wasn't a uh, a legal or a technical. Um, a change. It was just a comment that if we want to, we could. Got it. But okay. she doesn't want to. <laughs> um, so yeah, right here they're listed out. The move okay, to yeah. so, accept and approve. So I'll make a motion that we move to accept control A, B, C, E, F, G, H, I, and P. Second. second. You got it. <laughs> okay, so seconded. Yep. All those in favor. Okay. Right now, now we go back. So, on D, um, the motion we move to accept and approve Control D, which is established a disabled and elderly taxation relief fund, Chapter 60, Section 3D. So it's D. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Okay. Any discussion on it? No. Anything, David, on that one? No. All right. All those that approve. D. 
Next up, I move that we accept and approve control L. L, which is acceptance of gift land. I'll second that. It's part of the Parker Street, right? It's L and M kind of go together. That's correct. Yep. Somebody from Maynard. On the twentieth. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all those in favor of L? Yeah. Okay. Next up. Move to accept and approve control M. Second. Okay. There's no um all right, M. Okay. And any conversation on M? Nope. All right. Proper all those street. in favor? <coughs> Good. Um, move to accept and approve control N, local acceptance of tax provision. Second. Okay. <clears throat> All those in favor? Okay. Um, move to accept and approve control O, the Board of Selectmen as license authority. Uh, Second. Uh, Second. Okay. Any questions on that one? Is it Nope. And again, this is just defining out the authorities. Mm -hmm. Correct, yeah. Okay. All those in favor? <coughs> and move to accept. That was it, right? Oh, we did pee. Yeah, so we did pee. So that's it. Yep. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Are there any on these, Kevin, when we set up the warrant that in the unlikely event they fail, that you put the ones afterwards that are contingent upon, are there any yeah. that are contingent upon the previous? For example, if the town does not approve the zoning to even, well, I guess that's, that's we a still problem. We, we still, still have to regulate. We still would want to regulate it. Yeah. yeah. Licensing authority. So is for some reason was voted down. Um, that means that, you know, there's, there's a buy right yeah. option. So if, so I, I'm just trying to think it through. Are there yeah, any it there would that probably, are? It would be the, uh, it would be the um, Sudbury Street, probably, right? Oh, no, because she's writing the uh, one. She's going to do it as one article. So yeah. originally, J and K might be oh, contingent. So, no, but they're going to, we're going to be able to blend them into one article yeah, now. So we think J and K. I think okay. one, but also originally I was thinking it was going to have to be two articles: one for the uh, um, appropriation from the capital stabilization. Mm -hmm. She said that um, the way the wording that she wrote it in in the motion um, will will state where the funding's coming from. Okay. Um, and the appropriation amount will be listed. So we don't need two articles. All right. Um, one to approve the land, and then one to approve the money for the land. So that would be one, David, where yeah. if they don't approve the land, we exactly. don't need to. But it's going to be then if one. they're combined, it doesn't matter. I, I was just trying to think it so that when we go to put together. Yeah. Other order. than that one, I, I don't think there was anything that was really tied to the other. Yeah, okay. okay. Yeah. And, Kevin, can you just state for the record again this week, because I know... I'm, I'm confident several members of the board have entertained questions separately from the uh, on just clarifying what the process is. We're approving zoning of the, we're recommending approval of the zoning change bylaws for the marijuana articles as are in there. We're granting the authority to the board of selectmen as the licensing. Correct. And that we are uh, agreeing with the state suggested local option. local option yep We're and recommending that, that we accept recommending that we accept for a three percent tax um right revenue stream and that 
moving forward, because I know I think at least communications that I've received from members of town there, they remain concerned about continuing to have a voice in the process of what this ends up really looking like in the town. Right. Um, there'll be the opportunity to have deeper conversations about what the special permitting process looks like, Correct. how that whole application process will work. And then, of course, there will be the board's decision as permits come forward. That's correct. Yep. The special permit would require um, legal ha advertised hearing, um, go through the special process, um, process, um, et cetera. And if we wanted to do any additional requirements around or have, like, general rules or guidelines for the approval process of a permit, is there space to still do that above and beyond the zoning? Is that something planning board can think about? I mean, I'm just going back to like that, for example, the fact that at least in the latest draft of the, um, of the commission, right. the idea that you could limit total number of licenses to 20% of the package store licenses that you but have based in the community. On a quota type yeah. Thing. yeah. Is, so would that be regulatory that though versus be, zoning? Yeah, that would, that would be, be under the, that'd that'd be be under the auspices the of the board of select. Perfect. Um, That's what the I, board will, I, I said at the last meeting, the board will have to, um, in addition to having local alcohol regulations, um, the board will probably have to um, promulgate actual uh, regulations as it relates to uh, marijuana Perfect. Um, as well. And that's all I wanted to have out there yeah. just so for folks. And then the other, the other missing element is, is also the Board of Health as uh, it gets into some regulatory oversight by them if you're mm -hmm. talking about sale of uh, one, that the Board of Health controls the um, tobacco use uh, regulation, the sale of um, tobacco products, um, and there's, you know, there'll be some element added as it relates to this, but also um, uh, when it gets into the um, sale of uh, edibles, mm -hmm. um, you know, in uh, marijuana-infused uh, edible products, mm -hmm. um, there'll also be, you know, some licensing oversight with them as well. And I think it will still be interesting. I mean, I know the latest speculation is whether or not the Commission will be able to meet its own... I know deadlines yeah. given their open hearings yeah. and everything. So right. we will stay tuned. Yeah, I think we ha I, truthfully, I think we have a lot of time because uh, you know the one, particularly on the recreational side. Yeah, um, you know, the, the, looking at where they're at with number of applicants and licenses, and um, they're only you know they're they're the plan is to give those to experienced operators. So that's ones that are operating currently as mm -hmm. medical marijuana facilities, but also to um, Communities that actually have a, a letter of consent, mm -hmm. and nobody's come to us as uh, you know looking for that at yeah. this point. So um, it, it's going to be a very competitive process on the licenses that the state gives out yeah. before it even gets to the local level. Um, right. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we did nine. I think we're just up to I, I the next is the uh, ten, right? Ten. Ten. Budget. Um, Budget. Yeah. So as I as I said, the board will receive. Um, I'll send out an email with all of the budget <coughs> details prior to um, Saturday's meeting. Um, I do have good news, and that's uh, like that. I've been in contact with the business manager at um, Asabit. Uh, tonight, as the Asabit's um, uh, school committee meeting, um, where they're expected to actually vote and approve the budget. Um, but the way it stands now, um, there's a fairly considerable reduction in what we had as a, um, a placeholder number, and mainly due to the uh, governor's budget. Okay. Um, so that percentage increase is actually, on the Asabit side, has come down about 20%. Um, from 34% down to 14.8. Um, assuming that it gets approved tonight, which you know, I, I expect that it would. Um, I've taken that ASABIT um, reduction and have, have applied it to uh, the Maine and School District um, budget number. So been able to get their budget no, um, recommendation budget number up um, higher than what we were originally thinking. Um, you know, and at this point, it looks like we probably um, Final recommendation will probably come in around 5.3 percent, as opposed to the 4.2. So, um, you know, that's good news. That's positive. It, it certainly helps uh, the education budget, um, keeping uh, some of that, some of those funds in in the district. Um, but again, you know, there's other 
there's other cost factors that um, have driven the cost of education, particularly on the uh, assessment side, on the cherry sheet side. Um, you know, th that assessment's more than doubled from what it was two years ago um, and some other drivers. But it was, I was happy to see, uh, you know, my discussions with him that um, when he redid everything with the governor's budget, um, that that's what he was moving forward. So the number I've just given you is his, is his recommendation to the school committee um, at ACIBIT for this evening's approval. And again, that unlikely there'd be any change there. Um, so if, if that all plays out as expected, uh, I've been able to apply that, that reduction shift to the uh, main and school district's budget and um, get that up a little bit more um, than what we had mentioned in our last, last week. So in the time frame of uh, less than a week, that's uh, positive news. Um, overall, the uh, total expense budgets are around 3.1%. Um, combined and um, the uh, with some reductions. The general government um, currently is uh, proposed at a reduction of 4.26 percent. Um, public safety at, is up 1.24 percent. Public works uh, 2.37 percent. Cultural and recreation 2.3. Um, Maintenance education at 5.14. The ACIBIT is 14.81. Um, employee benefits 5.31, debt service is a reduction of 2.68, and then a reserve fund um, a slight reduction as well. So you have that breakdown um, in your in the executive uh, content of um, of this line item, um, and I'll obviously I'll go into much more detail on Saturday um, as to what some of those recommendations. But um, it is a little bit better news than it was a week ago in that sense. Um, to at least try to help uh, help on the on the school budget uh, a little bit. Um, beyond that, there's not much uh, changes. What um, we'll provide where those budget reduction recommendations have come from, um, in addition to uh, you know sending out all of the uh, the detail um, line item budgets for for the board to have. Questions? Has the school been uh, made aware of those changes, or is it too late in the day to let them know? Yeah, I haven't let them know yet. I did let um, talk to them about where we were at prior to, uh, but I haven't given them. Mainly, um, truthfully, I was at, um, waiting until it is official. Um, again, I don't anticipate any changes, but um, you know, waiting for Aspen to come back to me um, tomorrow or Thursday and say, uh, yeah, the, the school committee approved our budget recommendation. Um, assuming that's happening, um, that's where we should be at. Um, Everything else is pretty much, uh, you know, as it was a week ago. Um, again, you know, the uh, health insurance number out there still, um, and then any adjustments to, uh, you know, local state aid if if that happens prior to finalization of uh, the spring warrant. Mm -hmm. But that that'll be it for uh, beyond additional cuts in a particular department. Okay. Okay. Thank you, um, Kevin. So we did your report. We did the budget. Yep. I don't really have anything on my challenge report this evening. So just to follow up with Kate and then um, board reports. David? Um, yeah. Uh, first off, Chris and I uh, and Andrew were towards the end got to attend the, uh, the school's yeah. uh, finance night. Finance night. Kind of an interesting exercise, good discussion at our table. They had it split up into tables. Um, uh, it was somewhat regretful that, that you didn't get to hear a gr broader audience mm. comments because I think more people involved. But I mentioned to Andrew that um, it probably could be something that would be beneficial to an audience like <coughs> members of the Council on Aging to sit and go through it and, mm -hmm. and understand the budget or the the members of the Council on Aging, the, 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 you know, allow the seniors to come in and, and engage. Um, very, you know, overall worthwhile, I would say. Uh, somewhat basic for those of us who are tied to it, but for the ones that are not so much, I think it was uh, somewhat eye-opening for them, so, uh, and helpful. How was attendance? Uh, it was pretty good. There were, uh, you know, four people at least at every table. They must have had ten tables set up. So I think, they, I think every table that they had set was there was only one or two that didn't have a full 
uh, compliment of people. Yeah, that's great. Mike Guzzo attended as well, right? That's, Mike, that's yeah, right. Mike, Mike, Mike was Mike there. sat with me and uh, that table. It was an interesting exercise. It certainly, you know, even for those of us that, you know, deal with it every year, yeah, there was certain things there that, you know, you might not have known. FinCon so, members attended. What's that? There was FinCon several members. FinCon yeah, members. There yeah, several. Yeah. Uh, I'd say three or four. At least uh, three. At groups. least three. Yeah. Not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of what? School, school committee was it? No, there were only there were only two members of the school committee three. there. Three. Bethlehem was there. Really? Uh, and the two Mary. Marys. Bethlehem and the two Marys. Yeah. But yeah, no, it was. Um, it was well attended. It was interesting. And um, so tied to that, Kevin, I don't know if you had a chance to. Speak to review the photos that I sent yesterday that had been sent over. Yeah, I, I don't know what the deal is with I that. I did, yeah. Um, Aaron was looking, in, looking into that. Um, he had, had mentioned something about uh, there was a, a small puddle there that wasn't part of the phase one piece of the project. Oh. Um, but I'll get more information on that. Um, he is aware of it. Okay. Looked like more than a puddle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not sure. I haven't talked to him. He just mentioned it. All right, and then lastly, um, Kevin, this is your last meeting with us. Um, so for me personally, um, I want to say thank you. Thank and, you. Uh, I've enjoyed the time that we've spent. You know, it goes back to before you were yes. town administrator, before you were assistant town administrator. Um, you know, I think you brought a lot to the table for us, and, uh, you know, I've enjoyed working with you, and it's, uh, you know, I wish you luck. Likewise, thank, thank you. you. Appreciate that. Echo those sentiments. Turn over the binder. <laughs> you know, yeah. We don't have to take a picture when you do it. Um, Cheryl? No, I have no comments uh, to add. Uh, since, since our meeting last week, other two to, to echo David's thanks for, for your service and for helping me get up to speed and, yep. and learn the ropes and all that. It's been a pleasure to work with you and best of luck. Well, it was best of luck to you as well. Thanks. Yes. You have a further journey than I. A slightly longer commute. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I make a motion to adjourn in that case. Second. Second. All right. All in favor. It's a good meet. Katie, you're, there may have been an announcement of like.